Hi there, it's Brian Parham with The Rock Dojo, and I'm so excited for this edition of Why Is Music Important? I'm sitting here with one of my favorite artists, singer, songwriter, music educator, Lisa James Bennett. Such a pleasure. Thank you so very much for joining me today, actually at Rock Dojo HQ. Lisa, it's wonderful to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me over. <laughs> so Lisa, how did you get started with music? Well, my mom teaches violin and has been teaching in our house, uh, the house I grew up in. Um, now she's hit about 50 years of teaching private and group, and then she did 12 years in the schools. So my first experience was with my mom, but also all of my aunts sing in tune. All of them play an instrument. My grandparents played an instrument. Their parents played an instrument. So I feel like no matter what thing I would have chosen, music was there from the beginning. Amazing, amazing. Uh, yeah, it's like your Suzuki studio is like Portland Institution. Come on, give it a name. So and, and Yeah, so it's been at Suzuki Violin Studio. It's in Southwest Portland, but we're doing lessons on Zoom. Um, so if anyone's interested, we are accepting new students. Fantastic, and I'll make sure to put a link in the comment section and on the blog post for this. Now, what was the first song that you learned to play and sing? So the first song I ever learned on guitar is called Breathe by Anna Dalek. And um, <clears throat> just has a few chords, and I just fell in love with her voice and the melody. And what really got me started into wanting to play guitar is just so that I could accompany myself as a singer. Who are your musical heroes? All right, so I guess I would start with my family members, but then uh, the entire faculty at PCC the, in the music and sonic arts department, they are my real life heroes, but also my musical inspiration. Um, I wasn't performing before I got there, and um, Dan Pettis, who does uh, the class actually that we met in, um, he, he is so encouraging and loving, and Mary Catterley, who teaches um, choir and group vocal, she and Dan combined just were so supportive with me when I was first starting out, and I feel like that experience made me realize that, hey, I can actually do this, you know? Um, and then there's a lot of folks that are performing now. The person who also recommended that I go try the music program at PCC uh, is Will Kinky. And one uh, New Year's night, I saw him performing downtown, and it sounded so good, and I was like, I want to do this. Like, how do I do this? And he's like, come on to PCC. Like, so he was in the program when I first started. Um, he was just uh, ending, I was just starting. And anyway, I've just always felt such a connection and supportive community with folks that I've met through that program. And how did you develop your voice, both on the guitar and as a songwriter? So a lot of it was me writing down my feelings and you know, things happen in your life and you're like, I need to do something about all of these things so you don't bottle it up. So I started just like writing poetry and then eventually I would try to turn these experiences in my life into something beautiful that I can share with others and then they feel that connection to whatever experience that I had or however they're taking in my music. Um, so with singing, I just feel like it's my voice connecting with other people and then with guitar, it's more so like an accompanying Thing to support the melodies that I'm writing. Now, I, being a guitar player myself, singing is terrifying. I know there's a lot of other guitar players who feel the same way. Do you have any suggestions for people who maybe play the guitar and have dreams of singing or would like to accompany themselves vocally with the guitar? Yeah. Do you have any suggestions on getting started? You've just got to do it. Right? You just gotta put in the time and believe in yourself. Because with guitar or with any other instrument, like you're kind of separated from your instrument, but when it's your voice, like it literally is you, you are that instrument. So just putting in the time and the practice, and you know, you can practice in your room so that you don't have a live audience at first, but the more and more you do something, the more and more comfortable you are 
with that skill. And um, yeah, everyone can sing. <laughs> That's a really common misconception. Every single person can sing. So if you work at it, um, anything is possible, really. Amazing. And how has music playing shaped your life? So I've always known that I wanted to be a teacher. And music has always been part of my life. So by meshing those two things, I kind of feel like I have my dream job. Um, my entire family has always been very supportive of me and the music that I'm creating. And I think because they all have that connection with music too, they, they really tried to foster that in me and have always just believed that I'll be able to do the things that I set out to do. So music has really opened up so many doors for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I think even if I wasn't a very good musician, it still would feel like the sense of community and like everyone belongs no matter what level you are. Um, part of the teaching part of my life is like, you know, you meet someone where they are and then watch them grow and help them along the way to do that. Very beautiful. Um, I think that touches upon the next question is, tell us about your philosophy as a music educator. The biggest piece is that everyone belongs. And I, I feel like the older you get and the experiences that you have really impact um, your creative output and your like belief in yourself. Um, but with music, I mean, the opportunities are endless. You're, you, you have freedom of expression and um, it's just so foundational in, in, every, in every part of your life. You can, you can just like channel this excellence and success. Um, another piece that I'll touch on is that uh, right now I'm working in a more technical facet of music um, and in the recording program at PCC and teaching there and when I walked into that program, like I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to plug in a microphone. I didn't know what any of the things they were talking about. Uh, I like stopped the teacher at the time and was like, uh, "Can you tell me what those words mean?" And they like gave me a musical dictionary and was like, "You know, you can do this, basically." <laughs> and it took a really long time, and I'm still in that student mindset, you know, like learning new things every day. But especially in that, in that environment, it's like. All of my musicianship and my confidence in myself and my belief that I can do these things, like it, it didn't, it didn't help me with all of the technical aspects of that entire universe. So I just, I just put the time in. You know, I just started over again as like a, a very, very new person in a new industry, and I, I love it. And it's still to this day. I mean, I'm, I'm learning new things all the time. As an educator, I think that's one of the most transferable skills that you that anybody can let uh, leverage uh, in any area of their life is like, you know, to music is challenging. Learning to play a musical instrument is challenging, but once you develop that mindset that you're talking about, that you can do it, that you have that vision, that you put in the work, and then you transfer that to anything else. I mean, just like you learning those recording skills, and if, any, if anybody hasn't messed around with recording, I took that class also at PCC, which is short for Portland Community College, that's where we met. Wow, that was way harder. I took all the math classes, all the sociology classes, all the writing classes, all the music classes, that was by far the hardest. Yeah. And, and, yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say, Don Thompson is an expert in that field and knows all of the vocabulary. And yeah, it's so hard. <laughs> and uh, what does music have to offer kids? So in my life as a child, I was so fortunate enough to be, you know, handed instruments and like opportunities for trying different ones. It's like, know cello violin guitar piano <laughs> all these different you know options and then in my own parenting practice it's like okay I'm gonna do exactly the same thing I'm gonna let my daughter choose whatever instrument she wants to play and whatever she's feeling like she's gravitating towards like I'm just really grateful that she's into something that her mom is into <laughs> you know and um, it really helps you in every part of your life and it's been so inspirational for me and it's made our bond so much closer to be able to like create 
music together, both with singing and with playing guitar. And she's really into ukulele right now. And especially during the pandemic where everything is closed, she cannot hang out with her friends. She can't, you know, um, do really anything anymore except for be on the screen. One shining light in that is that she's had Zoom music lessons twice a week. And she's just taken off in her musicianship. Like I'm having to like keep up with her theory stuff, you know? And my partner is very good at theory and like they're having these like in-depth conversations and I'm just like, my dreams are coming true. <laughs> so for us, it's been like not only an engaging activity that we can all take part in that's not on a screen, but also it's just, it's just building up her confidence. Um, and the first time she ever like intentionally practiced like a lot to learn lyrics and to sing all the right notes um, was just over this last year. And she played a show with me, two songs, and literally it was the highlight of my entire, like every single performance is just like pale in comparison to that moment. That's so beautiful and inspiring. Um, how can parents integrate music education into the everyday lives of their children? I mean, you touched up upon this. Yeah. Any practical tips? Um, I feel like a lot of times, or sometimes, when parents do get music lessons for their child, um, sometimes they want to engage in that, and sometimes they don't. Like, sometimes they want a break, which is totally valid. I totally understand that. But if you are to engage with them, like, I feel like the retention rate is so much higher, and their enjoyment for that instrument grows because they're growing closer to you, and you're having this experience that really can't be captured by anything and um, with Belle you know she's like she's learning all these different theory things and she's applying them to different instruments and then you know she comes to show me something and it's like all right well let's sit down and do it you know and it, so it's like it's like a togetherness thing um, and getting a child to practice is very difficult if they don't want to do it but if, if you make it fun and engaging and it's like a thing the family does, um, that's, my, that's my top piece of advice. So, to make sure that I understand, you're, are you suggesting that parents actually study a musical instrument and learn alongside their child? Oh yeah. Yeah, and it's really fun and it doesn't matter what age you are. It, I promise if you give it a chance, like it will, it will totally change your life. And it doesn't need to be the same instrument. It can be even just singing along. But to have it be an engaging experience for everyone, if everyone's doing it, then it becomes, like at home, like when we're doing chores, like everything is a song. Like we're doing, like it's kind of like a Disney movie, um, which can be a lot. But, you know, everyone's doing what they're supposed to be doing. And it's fun. And Bill and I make up lyrics to each other and are like, it's just our, our thing. What skills should every young musician focus on developing? Metronome. Gotta have that. Timing is so important, especially when you're playing in a group. Um, I would say just learning rhythm and learning how to follow along. And like, what's really helped me is like listening to songs and either singing along or playing rhythmically along with the songs. And then, you know, the next song plays on the radio and you just keep going. It's a really easy way to practice. Um, and also just like having your instrument accessible to you so that it's not like a huge process. Um, like where's the tuner? Where's the, oh, where's the case again? You know, like if you have it out in your room and it's ready to just grab and go, that's another thing that's really helpful. And also just practicing if, if you are an instrumentalist, just trying to incorporate some sort of vocal practice along with your instrument because like what if you walk on the stage and you can't, like you can't hear for some reason, like the sound uh, isn't set up yet, but you have to do sound check and like you need your starting note. It's really helpful for me because <laughs> that has happened to me before. Like you, if you know your starting note before you start in like in your vocal cords and you can like make that come out. And then if you need to find it again, whether it's like nerves or whatever it is, uh, just being able to do that is a very useful skill. Are there any questions I didn't ask you that I should have asked you? Hmm. I don't think 
questions that you should have asked. Um, yeah, I don't have any. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. <laughs> well, thank you, Lisa. This has been spectacular. Thank you so much for a fascinating, incredible performance, first of all, and a fascinating interview. You rock. And for those of you out there, well, where can people go to find out about your music and to sign up for lessons with you? Yeah, so everything is at Love, Lisa James. And I say that because my idol, Mary Catterley, once told me everything's a love song. So I really thought about that for a long time and realized you're exactly right. And so all these songs that I'm writing, whether it's because you know I'm hurt or I'm sad or I'm you know, ecstatic, like all of these feelings are like either because of love or you, you know, you had it, you lost it. Anyway, I can go on and on about that. But yes, lovelisajames.com and all of my socials are at lovelisajames and you can also find the lesson link there too. Awesome. Lisa, thank you so much. And remember, every guitar master is once a beginner. The more you practice, the better you'll become. Thank you so much, Lisa James Bennett. Rock! Thank <laughs> you.